Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 72, where we're going to discuss elastic potential energy. Now, last time we talked about Hooke's Law, which allows us to find the force on a spring and relate it to its spring's constant. That was K. It also dealt with the fact that the forces were not constant when you're stretch stretching a spring. In fact, as you stretch a spring farther, it requires more force. So it's not a constant force to stretch a spring. There's resistance. It's called the restoring force when you're dealing with the forces on a spring. Now that being said, if you remember back when we talked about the work versus distance graphs, and we were able to find the area of that graph, the same can be done with the force versus elongation. It's no different than a work graph. In fact, the x instead of a d, it's x. So what we have is a situation where we have a nice linear graph. You don't have to worry about calculus to solve it. It's a triangle. And if you find the area under that graph, well, that's the work done. Well, remember, work is measured in joules, and so is energy. So if you want to find the potential energy stored in a spring, you could find the area under an F versus X elongation graph. Now, that's not going to be feasible because we're not always going to have a graph present. But what we can do is simplify that graph to get an equation. And in fact, we have to remember that the force isn't constant. And in fact, because it's a triangle, the area is 1 half base times height. Well, if we do 1 half base, which is X, times the height, which is F, we have 1 half XF. Well, if you remember, the force is KX. So if we have KX replace the F, we have 1 half XKX. Now, in order to find the work done and the energy stored, we can rearrange that equation to be 1 half KX squared. So the potential energy stored in a spring is based on 1 half because it's not constant. And it's based on x squared because we have the x from the base and then the x that's already part of the f term. So the equation for elastic potential energy is, is simply 1 half kx squared. So we have two different types of potential energy, gravitational, mgh, or elastic, which is 1 half kx squared. Now, I'm not here to tell you that these are the only two potential energies in the world. But an introductory physics course typically starts and stops with these two types of energies. So potential energy for our purposes is going to have two forms. Kinetic energy, only one. It's just energy of motion. Now that being said, we have stored energy in the spring that if we let it go, it can cause another object to move. That could be the case if we have a spring and we stretch it and we let it go and fire a projectile with it. We could also do the same type of motion with a rubber band. We can pull an object back with a rubber band and let it go, and that rubber band will use the stored energy to propel another projectile, thus giving it kinetic energy. So elastic potential energy can be useful to transfer it into kinetic energy. Now at this point, we have a new equation. PE is 1 half kx squared. Now typically we use PE sub s for spring, um, or stretchy thing. We don't use PE sub E uh, because then it spells P. But we're going to use PE sub S for elastic potential energy and the equation is 1 half kx squared. Now why don't we take out the whiteboard and do some practice problems so you're more familiar with the equation and you can use it to solve problems in the future. Thanks. For this next problem, we're going to look at a spring. We already know the spring's constant is 30 newtons per meter. And we're going to stretch it 10 centimeters, 25, and 50 centimeters. And what I want to do is find the amount of energy stored in the spring for each of these distances. Now, of course, if we were to exceed the elastic limit and stretch the spring out too far, then the energy would not be the same. We're assuming this K is constant, um, so these values would definitely have to be within the elasticity limit 
of the spring itself. Now our equation is 1 half kx squared, 1 half 30 newtons per meter, and all these centimeters need to be in meters, 0.1 squared. So for the first one, 0.5 times 30 times 0.1 squared, and I get an energy value of 0.15 joules. That's the potential energy stored in the spring. We usually denote the spring with PE sub S versus potential energy of gravity, which was MGH. So that's the difference between the two. If we look at the next value, 1 half 30 newtons per meter times 0.25 meters squared. 0.5 times 30 times 0.25 squared yields 0 0.9375 joules. And then finally, 1 half 30 0.5 meters squared. So 0.5 times 30 times 0.5 squared gets me 3.75 joules. Now as you can see, as we move farther and farther along the stretch, we're increasing our value in a direct square relationship because each one of these distances, or elongations in this case, have a square. So it's not a linear relationship, but a squared relationship in terms of the energy for each of the elongations. All right, in this problem, we're going to look at a Mini Cooper traveling at 65 miles per hour. It's going to have a lot of kinetic energy. It has a mass of 1140 kilograms, it has 65 miles per hour. We'll have to convert that 65 in a moment. But instead of using barrels filled with water to avoid injury um, near, let's say, a toll booth, the Department of Transportation is trying out these big springs to stop vehicles instead. This is not something that's probably feasible. You probably need some kind of object here. If we have a big spring, we might as well have a mattress as well. So there's a mattress at the end of the spring. Mini Cooper is going to hit the mattress, and it's going to compress the spring. And we're going to find out how much the spring compresses. But first, we need to know how much energy is going to go into that spring. And as I said before, it's based on the kinetic energy. Now, of course, 65 miles per hour, 1 mile, 1609 meters, 1 hour, 3600 seconds. So hours cancel, miles cancel, and we're left with meters per second. 65 times 1609 divided by 3600 gets me 29.05 meters per second. We'll use that in our kinetic energy equation. 1 half, 1140. We don't have to convert that, 29.05 meters per second squared. 0.5 times 1140 times 29.05 squared gets me 481024. And that's going to equal the energy gained by the spring. So that's going to equal 1 half kx squared. 1 half, 1 1.5 times 10 to the 5 newtons per meter. That's a 5. And then x squared. So this value, 481024, should have had joules. Divided by 0 0.5, divided by 1.5 second e5, and then take the square root. And that would mean the elongation is 2.53 meters. So we can stretch a spring or we can compress it. In this case, it would compress to two and a half meters.